from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Amor, Soft Torah. I'd like to dedicate our remarks today to an old friend of mine, Josh Hoffman, Alava Shalom, who, the author of Netvort, uh, many uh, wonderful emails he sent over the years uh, about the Torah. Josh shared the following thoughts, and I'd like to put them all together and make an additional point as well. Many parshiot begin with unique words, like vayakhel. That's the only parsha that starts that God gathered all the Jewish people. Last week there was an edah, I gathered the edah. Uh, and this week's parsha is unusual in that it says immoral koanim. It says you should speak to the people of, of, of the, the koanim. Well, many parshiot begin with daber, which is, also means speak, but this one begins emor. And, uh, and apparently, emor is softer than daber. Daber is, is harsher, and emor is softer. So the question is, why so soft? So Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, blessed memory, says that we're talking to the Kohanim. Kohanim are the leaders of the Jewish people. These are people chosen for leadership. And as leaders, we need to have an enthusiastic view. We need to view the Torah as exciting, leadership as exciting, something that we, we want to share with others. And therefore, he speaks to us in a softer tone. This is not some command that we must do, aye, aye, sir. But this is something we want to do. It's more God speaks to us in a softer tone because we have to carry out our tasks as koanim, as leaders, in a softer and more joyous kind of way. There's also, it also says, emor la koanim v'amartalim. It says it twice. Emor, you should speak to the koanim and you should say to them. Why twice? Rashi says, based on the Gemara Yevamos, that lazir gedolim alaktanim, that the parents need to make sure that children also observe these laws of the Kohanim. And therefore, we can understand again, says Rabbi Hoffman, because if the children are being spoken to, if it's about the children, the children have to be spoken to softly as well. When Moshe spoke to the Jews at Sinai, he said, Ko tomar Yaakov, Hashem said to the Jews, He said, Speak to the Beit Yaakov, to the women, should speak softly. So too with the children, we need to speak softly and more, a language of softer speech. The Sforno says that, that these words at the beginning of the Parsha about the Kohanim play off last week's Parsha. The end of last week's Parsha is that you need to distinguish between the uh, pure and the impure, and whose job is it uh, to make these distinctions? It's the Kohanim. It's their job to make these distinctions between the, the holy and the impure and the pure and, and all these things. And therefore, if we're taking, speaking about teachers, another reason why I need to speak softly, because a teacher needs to maybe carry a big stick, but he needs to speak, teach and speak softly as well. Khatam Sofer adds two other elements that Ray Hoffman uh, quotes. He says, when we speak about the, uh, the Kohanim, we're talking about the Bnei Aharon, children of Aaron. Aaron, we know from the Mishnah and Pirkei Avos that uh, we need to be, says Hillel, like students of Aaron. Aaron was Aaron, it was Ohev Shalom, Ohev Shalom. Aaron was one who loved peace and he pursued peace. And therefore, if we're speaking about the children of Aaron, who, uh, who their whole approach is a soft approach. We speak to them in soft tones. It's a parsha and more. That's why this is the parsha of more, more than any other parsha. I mean, any parsha was, all parsha were said to, to the Jewish people, but this one was more because when you talk, speak to the Kohanim, they're the pursuers of peace. Children of Aaron must be done in a soft way. And another beautiful soft note, says the Chesam Sofer, is that it says that it, to tell the children of Aaron that they, when they have a funeral, they, they, they're restricted. They can't go to the funeral unless it's their closest relatives. He's saying to them, look, Aaron, you lost two sons, but that'll be your last funeral. Every other, uh, every other Kohen may have a funeral, but not you. You suffered enough. And these are the soft and kind and comforting words that Moshe says 
uh, to, uh, to, to Aaron, and Hashem says to Aaron to assure him that the suffering in his family has come to an end. But then we have another question about the, the different section of the, of the, of the Parsha, and it ultimately it relates to the question, why is the Parsha divided in two sections? The first, the section is about the Kohanim, and the second section is about holidays, and they don't seem to be connected. Within the holiday section, there's another question which Ray Hoffman raises, and that is, in the middle of the, of the discussion of various holidays, Pesach, Shavuos, counting the Omer, and then there's one verse about charity, that when you harvest the field, be sure to leave a peya, a leket, leave the corner, leave the gleanings. You should leave them for the poor, for the stranger. Why here? I mean, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about charity. We're talking about the holidays. Why does it interrupt with the charity? You actually find a similar idea that in Parshat Re'e, when it speaks about the holidays, right before that, it speaks about Patoach Tiftach, the main mitzvah of charities, said not too far before that section of the holidays. What's the connection? So Rashi quotes another rabbi who says that the holidays have within them Yishel Hashem, each holiday is a sacrifice. And if a person gives charity, it says as if they built a Beit HaMikdash and they brought sacrifice. Interesting. Meshach Achma gives another explanation. He says, we're talking about Shavuos. Shavuos celebrates, commemorates the receiving of the Torah. Now you say, well, what laws do we get at Torah? Well, without the Torah, I wouldn't have known about to put on fill and to shake a lulav, to blow a shofar. But, you know, I could have figured out charity. I mean, I'm a nice guy. I could have done that anyway. But the Torah comes to tell us, but no, the Torah is also about charity. Part of the laws of the Torah is to mandate to charity to make sure that it's clear that this is a, an everlasting, ironclad law, that there is charity and there must be remembrance of the poor as well. Rav Ruven Feinstein, Rav Moshe Feinstein's son, writes in his work that that's why we read about Ruth. On the book of, on, on the holiday of Shavuot, we read Ruth. We we'll we'll read, God willing, in a few weeks. Why? Because Ruth is all about chesed. It's all about kindness. And uh, the, we want to show that kindness is also from the Torah. That not only that the Torah is all about kindness, but without the Torah, you wouldn't have kindness. Because we wouldn't know. When should we be kind? When should we be cruel? What if someone's dying? How do you, what's, what's considered kindness? What's not considered kindness? Right? Mercy killing. In order to deal with these difficult questions, we need, we need to know what is kindness. When should we show kindness? How do you show kindness? And therefore, we read the book of Ruth on Shavuos. But it also explains something else. This, during this time of year around Shavuos, we also read the Pirkei Avos. And the uh, Pirkei Avos, the ethics of the fathers are the major principles of the father, of the, of the uh, chapters of the major principles of the Torah. It's only in that particular Masechta, that tractate of Mishnah, where it gives you the chain of tradition from Moshe to Yoshua all, all the way down to our, pre- <clears throat> to our present time. And the question is, why is the chain of tradition found particularly in Masechet Avot, in the tractate that deals with ethics? And the answer to Barjanura says that the Avot, these ethical principles, they're also from Sinai. We learn them from God. Even ethical principles, even how to be a good person, it's also learned from God as well. And that's, we need to remember that, particularly around Shavuot's time, to remember that the Torah is to make sure that all of our ethics, not only from our heart, it's important to, for, to, for it to come from the heart. It also, it has to be ironclad. It's, these are not things that I happen to do because I happen to be a nice guy today. I have to do it tomorrow when I don't feel so nice. And I have to do it if, if I don't have the greatest, warmest heart. I have to do it anyway because the Torah says so. There's an element of the ethics, too, need to come from the Torah. So Josh Hoffman, who's sometimes affectionately called the Hoffer, he said, that's why it's interesting to note a comment by Mahatma Gandhi, who said that society is judged by how it treats its animals. Because he felt that the animals are the lowest in society if we treat our animals right. Of course, we do believe in Tsar Bar we have to make sure we don't pain and inflict any pain on animals, unless for human use. But that would not be our major guiding principle. The guiding principle is a little different, namely 
that we, we're judged, a society is judged by how it treats the lowest in its society. And therefore, if you're celebrating your holiday, the question is, how is the lowest in society doing? How is, if you're celebrating Shavuot, you're celebrating receiving the Torah, the question is, how are the lowest ranking in society, how are they doing? How are you treating them? That will determine the extent to which the Jews have truly accepted the Torah and set up the magnificent society which the Torah envisions. And one might argue that now we can go back and connect the entire parsha, Because we said that the, the parsha is about emor, it's about being soft. And that's true of the Kohanim, as Rabbi Hafen pointed out, the Kohanim have to be soft in their approach to the Jewish people. And it's also true of all the Jewish people. That as we celebrate the holidays, which surely for our benefit, surely brings great joy, but we need to remember the poor as well. We have to have a soft approach to the, to the holidays as well. Because after all, what are the holidays? Ramam says, When you eat and drink on the holidays, you have to give the, the widow and the poor as well. With other aniyim ha'umlolim, those unfortunate souls who are so poor. Misha Noel Daltos Beto, the Ramam says, anybody who closes his, 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 his courtyards, and he ocha v'shosa hu vanav, v'yishto, he just eats with himself and his family, and does not share with the poor, and those who are afflicted in their soul, it's not a simchas mitzvah, a simchas kreso, he's just filling his belly, it's not the joy of his heart. It's not a, a joy that, um, that one can associate with a mitzvah. And he quotes various verses in Hosea and elsewhere. Malachi tell us of, of, of how a holiday can be uh, a, a disgrace. So why is this verse, why is the verse about charity found among, in the middle of the holidays? Because if you want to have a holiday, you have to share with the others. Torah has to be soft. Torah has to be gentle. Torah has to be loving. Torah has to be sharing. If not, it's not emor, it's not soft, it's not from the Talmud of Shalar, and it's not from the students of Aaron. It's not from that great tradition from Sinai about ethics and goodness and kindness. And therefore, it's no Torah at all. These are some thoughts from my good friend, Josh Hoffman of Al Shalom, a blessed memory. May his memory be a blessing. And may we always remember these teachings and others that Rabbi Hoffman share with us, that the importance of a soft approach. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sefer Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of the Parsha. Join us each week for the discussion of the Parsha, holidays, how-to videos. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.